Hey, hello. You're stuck in traffic with Wolf Gorlick, a couple minute riff on IT and IT security. Today, looking at threshold model, cognitive model, and uh, what that means for security culture. Went to the theater, caught a, uh, caught a performance, caught a musical, it was great. Uh, leaving, I get in the car, sixth, seventh floor of parking structure, and uh, everyone is in one line, which seems weird to me. And uh, I turn to turn my woman. I'm like, what's going on? And uh, do you see any reason why we should be in line? She's like, I don't know. And uh, so I started around line. Why not? And sure enough, got to the bottom. And uh, the parking gate instructor was dramatically trying to get people to, uh, to get into the second gate. So I was glad I did that, right? Um, the tip to you is to recognize that there is a model and the typical set of human behaviors uh, that precludes many people from doing something that's different than what everyone else is doing. This is called the threshold model. Now, I'm not surprised that there was only one line. I'm not surprised I got some dirty looks for starting my own line. I am surprised that no one else started their own line. Uh, and I am very surprised that no one else followed me. If you think about it in terms of the threshold uh, model, everyone has their own threshold, right, that dictates what activities that they perform. It's not necessarily what they believe, that's a whole another thing, but what activities they perform. So whether or not you believe you should only be in one line is different than whether or not you form a second line. And that threshold model is tied pretty closely to peer pressure. So people with, um, with high thresholds will not tend to do anything that no one else is doing vis-a-vis that stay in the same line. People with low thresholds tend to do whatever they think is right and or tend to follow people who are maybe one or two uh, strays who are doing something uh, that no one else is doing. If you uh, get on um, Google and, and look up the TED Talk where there's like the one guy dancing, that's not there's two and there's three or four people, right? That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's terms of thresholds that create and move change. What does this have to do with security culture? One of the things that we oftentimes get hung up on is how do I change the culture? It's difficult. It's a difficult question. Um, it's easier to say how do I get there to be two lines? Still kind of a difficult question. Uh, obviously the guy down at the bottom of the parking structure was trying very hard to get two lines. Uh, how do I get a couple key people who have low thresholds to change their behavior? That is an easier question. If we can change the question from how do we create a security culture to how do we instill a couple security behaviors? And then further refine that in, how do I create a couple of these key behaviors in people with low thresholds who are likely to, to go against the grain and start that movement? then it becomes much easier. We pick out the people who are early adopters, early movers. We pick out the people who um, will become the champions for our security program. And we change one or two behaviors with them. And then we equip them to get other people to follow. It's a little bit of a different question, but it's a little bit of an easier question. And smaller scale, but it's more practical. Uh, and I would suggest that when we're creating security culture, that's a good place to start. Have you seen that? Have you seen like um, in your dev program, the one guy you got to change or your IT ops folks refuse to patch the server, but there's this one guy who you're like, hey, you should patch. I'm like, I, I should patch. And that started the, the, the change towards security culture. Let me know, hit me up in comments or on social media and uh, I will talk to you later.